Hello, Wally. Welcome to the Doing CX Right Show. Thank you, Stacey. Um, you know, I've been trying to get on this show for two years, so <laughs> thank you for finally accepting me on your platform. It's been, it's been a battle, and I know you've fought against me, but I won over, and I'm finally here. So thank you so much. Well, I could tell the comedian has already showed up because <laughs> you, my dear, are hard to get. So mutual, mutual here. So tell my audience, it's hard to believe that someone may not know you if they watch Saturday Night Live and some other shows, but please tell the yeah. audience, who are you? Well, my name is Wally Ferriston, and I am the um, the owner operator of New York City Q Cards, which is a uh, the prevalent and the o- only Q card company in uh, operating on the East Coast. So I do Q cards for Saturday Night Live, Late Night with Seth Meyers, the Jimmy Fallon Show, Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, and uh, many other shows. We're doing New Year's Eve shows and things like that. I also own another com- Q card company called Q Cards by Wally where I do personalized cards for, for people. We can talk about that later. But that's my yes. job. I do two cards and I'm, on, and, I'm a, and I'm now a television personality, if you will. Yes, you are. Well, let's start with why. Why are you so passionate around what you do? Well, I mean, I think it's, I want, you know, I was, I grew up in the first half of my life, first quarter of my life, I was passionate about being a writer and I really wanted to be a writer. And I took a job with Saturday Night Live to get my foot in the door, which a lot of young people will do. You take a first job. It may not be the perfect job, but you're taking a job that will hopefully get you to where you want to be. And it's something that I found that I was really good at. For some reason, my skills um, holding cue cards were were really good and I and I was um, and I was very calm under pressure and um that made me perfect person for this job um and mm-hmm. it was just something that I excelled at and uh and it's a fun job so I kept on doing it I've been doing it for 32 years now so something that's Yeah fun. and you solved a real business need and it's yeah. fascinating because as we live in the digital world right now we have to still go back to basics Right, right. Yeah, no, I mean, with with the advent of teleprompter, and um, uh, you would think that all shows would go to teleprompter. And a lot of people ask that. Why aren't you using teleprompter? Well, isn't that much easier than cue cards? Um, for Saturday Night Live, I can say cue cards have been, they've been using them since the show started in 1975. And it's um, it's part of the show. It's a part of the, the excitement that people will come and see the show and they'll come up to me afterwards and they'll say, we were watching you guys do the cue cards as much as we were watching the actors perform. So it's not just a, a means to help out the actors, but we've become actually part of show business and part of a show that people enjoy watching. And it's a, and it is kind of a callback to the, to like the fifties and stuff, you know, and it's a really cool, neat thing. It really is. What's one fact that people may or may not know about you? So I, as you see, you can see what I, if you, if you were smart, you can see what I left out. I said I was really good at holding cue cards. My <laughs> handwriting was terrible. Growing up, growing up, every report card I had, I had A's, I had straight A's through from first grade through uh, high school, graduation high school. But every report card I got, every single report card I got, great grades, great kid, great personality, the worst handwriting we've ever seen. And... Look what I do for a living now. I make <laughs> a living writing using my handwriting. Now my hit, my my printing was not great. I almost got fired within the first three shows that I worked for, but um, uh, it got better and it got trained. But um, yeah, for someone whose whose teachers were like, "This is the worst handwriting I've ever seen," to make a living with my handwriting is pretty ironic. <laughs> it's very ironic for sure, which makes me believe that we can actually use our deficiencies mm-hmm. and. Yes. Figure it out. Yeah, don't you know? My brother was the one who got me the inter- the interview to do cue cards, and he he told me about the job, and he, and I said, "Well, did you recommend me for it?" And he knew I was looking for a job, and he was looking for a job for me, and he said, "No," because I know your handwriting's terrible. And I was like, "Don't let them tell me that," you know. Like I I didn't. He shied away from it, but I didn't shy away from it. No, it's a default, and it's you know, it's and it's something that I'm not good at, but. I'll go, I'll be willing to work at it to make it better because this is yeah. the chance I need. And you know, 32 years later, you know, it worked out really well, worked out really well for me. That's a great story. And I yeah. also want to compliment you, as you talked about before, that where you started compared to where you are now. And you've given so many, I want to say kids, they're not kids, but they're young, 
a chance and you're really been giving back. Yeah, yeah. I love that. That's the best part of, especially being in this business. And, you know, there's a lot of jerks in this business. I'm sure there's a lot of jerks in every business, but the entertainment mm-hmm. business, especially, I think you have a lot of ego and I saw and a lot of stuff like that. So I've always been, if I can help somebody get to the job they want to get as a stepping stone, you know, I, I talk, I talk to people, uh, I talk to kids, I give them advice, I recommend them for jobs, I recommend them from internships. And um, I just ask them to pass it along when they get to a position, you know, that they can help out a kid, they'll remember that and they'll help out somebody, you know, so it's, it's just great. It makes me feel really good and, and, and bring good young people into the business. Yes, I noticed that and I applaud you for that. Thank you. So Thanks. let's talk about SNL for a moment. It's an award-winning show consistently with long-term fans. I call those customers as well. Yeah, yeah. What, in your opinion, makes the show so successful with loyal fans? What, what's the behind well, that? I think, I think the fact that it's been on for so long, number one. Okay, it's been on since 1975. So, you know, your, your, your parents watched it. I, we, we've watched that. Our kids have watched it. There's a whole generation and, and, and everybody has a different take on it. They're different. They have a favorite cast that they watch. And it's usually the cast you grew up with, you know, but mm. I just think the fact that it's been on so long and it, it, it changes. It's the same every week, but it changes every week. You don't know what you're going to see. You turn on on Saturday night. It's on 1130. Most people aren't out at 1130 unless you're young. And then you, mm. now these kids, they can watch it on YouTube the next day or even, you know, a couple hours after the show airs. But most people, like you know, are, are, are if you're young, you're going out. You're, you have a curfew. You're home at eleven. Okay, I can watch Saturday Night Live at eleven thirty. Our age, we're going out. We're not staying out past eleven usually, unless it's a special night. No, you're home. You're not asleep. Let's watch Saturday Night Live. It's the only thing that's on on Saturday nights, and yeah. I think it's people will tune in to see okay who's hosting and what they're gonna do. So like, like it's they know what they're gonna get. It's the sketch show. They're gonna get they're gonna get a couple of songs from a from a musical person. They're gonna get a monologue, they're going to get a cold open, but they don't know what those are. They don't know what they're going to be. So people tune in to watch what they are. And it's and I think it keeps people coming back because even though it's such an old show and it's been on for so long, it's fresh every week. It's something different every week. So to recap, because it relates to business, which is it's innovative, it's consistent where people know what they're going to get, but yet there's the element of surprise yeah. Yeah. with consistency though. Yes, yes. It's consistently changes every week. I think people people tune in to watch that. You know what I mean? But they know what they're going to get and they they pick brands where they know and trust that they're going to be spending their time. It's going to be valuable. Correct. What also is interesting, unlike corporate business, now you have Warren Michaels there consistently forever. Yep. Yep. So that's a company culture. Do right. you believe that impacts too? Yeah, I think so. I think that I think it, it it everything is everything comes from top to the bottom, you know. And 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 like like you guys have bosses and directs and stuff like that. We have producers and there's different levels of producers that are in charge of different things. And um, it, and and their message is the same as Lauren's message. Lauren, whatever Lauren, whatever message Lauren is, Lauren says that's what they, you know translate down the board. You know what I mean? Yes. 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 So culture, there is a culture at SNL. Mm -hmm. And so like in business, as you said, it is top down, but then also they must be hiring right where you have the staff who's bottom up embracing and and there is that culture. Yeah. There's, there's department heads for every department and basically it, you know, just like a business, if everybody jo- does their job correctly, the show goes on and is successful. You know, not you know, content aside. You know what I mean? Yes. Like if you're going to do a launch for a business, everybody's doing their job. If everybody does their individual job, the launch is going to go okay. Now, whether the launch is successful or not, or whether the show is funny or not, that's another thing. That's that's a whole other thing. But actually, just setting up the launch and getting it done is a different thing. Yes. Now. Let's talk about content for a minute because in business and in customer experience practices, we get the voice of the customer to make sure that we launch products and services that really fit their needs. How do you in show business take that same principle? And I know 
I've been to the SNL show where you're doing before the live show. Yeah. And you're getting feedback. Talk to me about that. Yeah. I mean, we do it. We, they do a dress rehearsal just to kind of gouge, gauge what they think will work. Because you never know in, in comedy, you don't know what's going to work or not. Yeah. Um, so they'll do a dress rehearsal and and from there they'll pick. But some things that don't do well with the audience still make the show maybe based on other reasons, based on, you know, there might, you know, we're doing things now where we have advertising in sketches or they'll write a sketch where there's an advertising in it. So sometimes they'll put that sketch on, even though it wasn't uh, the funniest sketch, but there's a product placement in it and they almost have to, you know, there's things like that seeping into it. Um, but I think, I think mainly it is the scunny, the funniest sketches make it, but I think mainly it is that, but also, you know, we're doing things where, um, the writers are young, you know, depending on what, you know, they're, they're older writers, but they also hire younger writers because they like to put things in sketches that are trending, um, that the mm. kids know about. Because I'll see a sketch about something and there'll be, there'll be a phrase in it or a product in it that I have no idea what it is. And, and I'm like, what, what is that? And, why is that in this <laughs> and then, it, then we do it in front of an audience and the audience goes crazy because we mentioned this thing because it's a trend yeah. on TikTok or something that I don't know yeah. about. But they yeah. do that a lot. And I've noticed that a lot. And it's really interesting to see something on an SNL sketch, see the audience react. And then the next day, of course, I see it everywhere. And I'm like going, oh, that's where that came from. Oh, I get it. Yes. So the lesson there then I think is that we need to marry the Gen Z, the Gen X. I mean, really to stay innovative, we have to listen yeah. to them too. Yeah, for sure. For sure. The young, I'm telling you, the, the young voices and stuff like that are, you should be listening to them a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So now I know the show before the show happens. Now, before Saturday, before Friday, when do you start the whole process of developing content and getting feedback? Uh, for the, for the, I mean, like the writers or the writers and all that stuff. So for Saturday mm -hmm. Night Live, the writing is done on Tuesday before a show. Okay. <clears throat> and there's no feedback other than them writing sketches in their offices or maybe running, writing, reading a sketch to a, to a fellow writer. They'll write all their sketches. And then on Wednesday, they do a read-through where they'll read all the sketches, which are about 40 to 50 sketches. They'll sit at a, at a table all around with the host and they read all the sketches out loud. And okay. that's the first time you're seeing other people's reactions to your written word. And then they, you know, they pick the best 11 of those 45 sketches and those go yeah. and those go in the show. And then out of those 11, seven make it maybe, you know, into the show. So it's a, it's, it's a tough grind and it's competition, but that's what makes it, you know, you're getting the best seven sketches. Now, if you look at Late Night with Seth Meyers, he talks about this for a typical monologue. Seth does maybe nine or 10 monologue jokes a day. He looks at 300 jokes a day to pick those nine jokes. So think about Ooh. that for business. Now, that, I don't think that translates to business. If you needed nine ideas, would you look at 300 ideas for those, those nine ideas? Probably not, right? Well, abs actually, I do. Because really? I'll, I'll do a survey, for example, or a focus group uh -huh. about a topic. And I'll have to use some data and analytics to be able to make sense of all the comments. But uh -huh. yeah, in order to really make some decisions from outside in, yeah, it takes a lot of feedback. So there you go. So there you go. So, so, so then it is similar. Yeah, you just you look Absolutely. at a, you look at a ton of stuff. You pick the best things, and hopefully they 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 work. Yes, but the point is for both that you can't make decisions and assume success in a silo. Nope, nope. definitely not. Definitely. Not. That's the synergy for sure. Yeah. That would be very um, egotistical, I think, if people if people did that. They, they, right? They could say, "My ideas. <laughs> here are my ideas. They're going to work. Just just." you know, implement them, right? Yes, but truth be told that some brands do that and it's from only the a small group of people's feedback. Right. And obviously that's a mistake and, and doesn't yeah, work. For sure. So now talk to me about technology as you started to say in the beginning. We know that technology is changing the way we live and we work. Right. Right. How do you see technology changing show business? 
Well, it's, it changed SNL in the last couple of years in the fact that we, in the old days, up, or up until three years ago, we used to be live, you know, Saturday Night Live, only on the East Coast. And mm-hmm. then it would be repeated, you know, it delayed, showed, shown the live taping. It would be shown across the country as the time zone says. So in California, they'd watch it at their 1130, but it was three hours old, you know, at the time. So we'd just show the tape version. And sometimes if there was a big mistake during the during the air show on the East Coast, they would they would fix it for the West Coast show. So they wouldn't see the same show. They would put the dress rehearsal sketch in if there was something really bad that happened. Whatever. They can edit for those shows. Now, in the last two years, we're live across the country, which we had never been able to do before. So in California, you can watch Saturday Night Live at 8.30 at night because it's airing at 11.30. So that's changed the game for, for everybody. So now everybody in the United States can see Saturday Night Live live. And they don't have to watch mm-hmm. it, I think. So they'll see the live version, if you want, in California mm-hmm. at 8.30 and see what's happening and see if there's a mistake and see what happens. So it's kind of cool that way. And and then I think the other technology way is, like, Late, late Night with Seth Meyers can release parts of their show before the show airs. So we air at 12.37 at night. Most people are sleeping at 12.37 at night. Is there, it's, that's why it's called Late Night. Mm-hmm. But we do, Seth, Seth Meyers has a, a segment called A Closer Look. And he releases that at nine o'clock at night on YouTube. So he gives people a chance that don't want to stay up, but are really want to see this segment. And we'll, he'll get like one to 2 million views before the show even airs at 1237 of that one segment. So that's good for advertisers. That's good. Yeah. It, promotes, it promotes the show. And also you can watch Seth Meyers on different platforms. You can watch him on NBC. You can watch him on Peacock. And you can watch them on YouTube. You can watch them on YouTube the next day. So there's there's more ways to watch it. And there's different things they can do with the technology that way. That's fascinating. And yeah. shows the value of how companies are innovative with the times. And mm-hmm. I'm guessing that they listen to the voice of the audience and customer to adapt the time. That's right. That's right. Yeah, you don't have mm-hmm. to watch in the old days. You would, if you didn't watch Saturday Night Live and you missed it, if you didn't tape it on a on a cassette tape, you had to wait until they repeated it, hopefully, <laughs> to see it again. You know, but now, hours later, you can watch every sketch on YouTube. You know, they release it on YouTube, and even the cut sketches they'll put sometimes on YouTube, so you can see the things that were cut that in mm-hmm. the air. You can do all these different things with it, which is really, which I think is really neat. Yeah, it gives people many more options. That's why people, younger people, be like, I'm going out Saturday night. I'll just watch. I'll watch it on YouTube the next day, or I'll watch it, you know, on on, yeah. on my DVR. Or I'll watch it on my phone, you know, the next yeah. day. You know, it's great. Yes. Many more options to see it. So, in corporate world, we have new products and services, and we're building them out, and it takes a lot of resources, time, money. But by the time it releases, nobody really knows on the back end what it takes. And I have come to observe from your stories when you tell me about some of the shows, it's amazing what happens behind the scenes that you don't know. It's seamless to the audience. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about that from what does it really take? What's it like? being on the, there in the studio till from beginning to actually it happening, people don't realize what's involved. It, it's, uh, it's, it's almost hard to explain. It's, they, you know, the, the, the term controlled chaos is used, thrown out a lot. Okay. It's controlled chaos. You know, there's mm. a format and everybody has, we have a format, we have rules that we follow, you know, every day, the three days that we're shooting in production, but there'll be day, there'll be Thursdays where, I'm there at like 11 o'clock or 11.30 at night and I'm just like going, this, we're not going to, this show is, we're not going to make it. They're not going to be able to do this on Saturday night. I, there's no way we can do, <laughs> we, can, we, can do <laughs> we can do this. And then the next thing I know, um, I'm, I'm, you know, taking my sponge off my, my face mask, you know, and I'm like going, okay, the show's done. I don't believe we just did that show. Like I'm, I'm sitting in my chair going like, I don't believe we did it and we did it perfectly mm. and it was funny and it worked out the way the writers wanted it to work out. I, I, I just don't know sometimes how I really don't. How you do I've, been it. 30, I've been at 32 years and I just, I don't know. I mean, if the show wasn't live, I don't think we'd ever go on the air. I don't think you'd ever see a show 
because they'd always mm-hmm. be tinkering and rewriting and they'd want to, you know, meddle with things because it's live helps us out a lot because we know, you know, sometimes Friday night, Friday nights have been late lately. And sometimes they're there at till 1245. So 1245 in the morning on Friday night, we have a show the next day, less than 12 hours away. And I have to be back to work in like, you know, eight hours, nine hours. And I'm, I'm tired and I'm like, I, I don't know how I'm going to make it through this show. But then you get back to work. You get the you get the adrenaline rushes. You get the you know, mm-hmm. and then once the live show starts, the adrenaline rush I get is is insane. And I think everybody must get some version of that yes. because they don't you know this is their job and they don't want to screw up and make a you know make a bad thing. But it, everybody does their job. If everybody does their job, going back to that, then it it works and we get it done and we do you know and and again whether it's funny or not is subjective. I think just getting that show on the air is yeah. is a you know is a um, is a marvel. You know, that, you know, mm. that we well, what I get from your stories is also the power of teamwork. Yes, for sure, for sure. And, and knowing and knowing what you're knowing what is your place because sometimes people will try to poke in where they're where it where it isn't their job and say, "Hey, shouldn't you be doing it this way?" Because I saw you do it this way, and they'd be you know, and they're like, "What do you know about audio? Do you know anything about audio?" <laughs> you know. And I'm like, no, no, I don't. And they're like, okay, so why don't you just stick to cue cards and we'll stick with our audio thing. But that's a big thing sometimes. People trying to poke it. And I know that happens in business as well. People trying to oh, do... Oh, yes. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so oh, yes. You can't... Maybe in business, you have to be a little bit more like, you know, well, you know, you know, you have to be a little bit more, you know, coy with it and, and, and understanding about it. But, you know, in the TV business, if someone is poking around where they shouldn't be poking, they get told, hey, hey, that's not your job. Don't worry about that. We'll We'll take care of that, you know? Mm-hmm. But yeah, so yeah, it's knowing what your job is and doing it and sticking with that. Well, and I think also the power of deadlines. I mean, you yeah. know, yeah. airtime, there's no yeah. negotiation. Right, right. We're on at 1130. Yes, you're absolutely right. So yeah, teamwork, we, we, everyone yeah. knowing where their beginning and end is. Yeah, and stick stick to your job. Do your job well and don't worry about other people's jobs. They'll get it done. And if they don't get it done, mm. they won't be there for very long. You know, that's usually the way, that's usually the way, yeah. kind of the way it works. You know what I mean? Yes. Very, very similar. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Would, would you say comedians, they have to be confident and resilient and adaptable to succeed in their field? Are these what you notice, something different, something more? Well, I'm going to agree with two out of those three. Okay. Right? Resilient, yes. Adaptable, yes. Confident, no. Most of the comedians I meet are the most unconfident people. They're they've got um, uh, <laughs> they've got psychological issues. They've got OCD issues. They're not confident. They're scared. They don't think they're funny. But yet they're on Saturday Night Live. So. I, but I think adaptable and and resilient are key things. They stick with it and they try to get confidence. Most, especially Saturday Night Live, you know, Seth Meyers talks about being on Saturday Night Live and not feeling confident that he wasn't going to be fired. I think four years in, went to when he was doing, we started doing Weekend Update. He or or he became or they made him head writer. He's like, okay, they like me for my writing. I got a job. I'm going to stay here. I'll be. I'm, I won't be fired. But a lot of them are the same. I hear that all the time. Three or four years in until they feel comfortable that, that it won't be fired. So confidence mm. is not a key thing for most comedians. They're, they're, they're scared. They don't think they're funny, a lot of them. So you don't think they're funny themselves un- until they get, they're in the system for a long time. And then they get that confidence a little bit. But confidence sometimes maybe could hurt a comedian because you get too confident. Mm. Then you get, you know, get, get cocky and maybe mm-hmm. you don't work as hard. When you're not confident, you work seem to work harder, I think, at it. Yeah, and you've told me in the past there's some, I'll leave them uh, nameless for the moment, yeah. that when they are so confident, they're actually the hardest people to work with. Yeah, yeah, because they don't they think they know everything. And yeah. they, you know, and they and they then they they over and some sometimes they'll overthink overthink things or they won't put too much work into it because oh I got this, no problem. And mm-hmm. that's and then that's they're not they're not they're not good um hosts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Or true. team players. Or very that's exactly right. Not good team players. Exactly. So now you have figured out a way to take your skill, 
take your job, take your passion and become, you're already an entrepreneur, but to elevate that, talk about Cue Cards by Wally. Well, Cue Cards by Wally was uh, born out of the pandemic, the COVID pandemic when I was home and I wasn't allowed to do Cue Cards. There was no shows that were using Cue Cards. No shows were on or they were doing them from their houses. And um, I was sitting on my couch gaining weight and my wife was not happy about that. <laughs> and uh, my wife is an entrepreneur, as you know, and she was was like, I, she made the statement, I think I, I need to start another business. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> oh, my. Oh, wow. and, and every business seems to be, you know, be geared towards me anyway. But, um, um, and she has a full-time job, so she wasn't looking to do the work. And I was like, well, I, I have this idea for Cue Cards by Wally where, you know, I, and I had mentioned this to her a year ago and she had turned me down. She was like, no, 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 it's not right for it. But now with the pandemic, Cue Cards by Wally is just doing personalized cue cards for people to give as gifts to uh, uh, friends, to family members, or themselves. Um, and the pandemic was the perfect time to do it because people weren't able to go to weddings and birthday parties and, and things like that. And um, it was just something that turned, was just an idea that, that she helped me out. We did a basic, really, you know, really little business plan. We did a, a you know, an Instagram account and a Venmo account and we launched and a little website we started after it. And uh, it kind of just took off. It was, uh, it was one of those big things that just little ideas that took off and it kept me busy during the pandemic. And it's, and it's made a lot of people really happy, which really makes me happy. And I'm still doing it. Right now, I'm still doing it for the second year I'm doing it. A lot of Christmas orders. A lot of Christmas orders this year, so it's really nice. I love it. And I've read the comments of how you are making people happy. And yeah. it. the lesson is small things can be so powerful and then they become much bigger. Yeah. So well, you know, we, talk, we talk about confidence and I, I, I wasn't confident about the idea and I still, I'm still suspicious of myself. And, and I'll tell you mm. what, because I look at the product I'm giving people and I see it, I look at it as cardboard marker on cardboard and people are paying good money for this marker. Not only are they paying good money for it, they're, they're writing me back saying, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Thank you so much. This is going to make my dad's, you know, year, yeah. make my cousin's life. This is, and I'm like, but it's just marker on cardboard, but I'm not giving myself enough credit of the brand that I've built that yes. it's because I'm writing it and I take a picture with it and it's Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live uses the same things and it's giving people, it's not a piece of Saturday Night Live, but it's a piece of a piece of Saturday Night Live. It's, you know, yeah. it's the closest that some people are going to get to a piece of Saturday Night Live. So I get yeah. that. And yeah. um, I just, I just laugh at it sometimes like going, okay, I mean, I mean, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's something I really like doing and it gives people joy. I just question it sometimes, but I guess I don't understand my own brand um, uh, sometimes, you know, I take, I take it, I take it for granted. Yeah. Well, that's what keeps you humble. Yeah. I try. And, <laughs> and, and, no, there's no trying. It's real. You are. Yeah. And I feel the same way where people know me as a thought leader and yeah. I'm just me. I just show yeah, up right? and, yeah. you know, so there's something very big to say about that. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's making us go places. Yeah, it's nice. It's really nice. Final rapid fire questions. So okay. if I had tons of leaders and entrepreneurs and people who want to really understand the biggest takeaway from today, from your experiences, what would you say? What's the one thing you want them to remember? Uh, I would say change is good. I like change, embrace it, initiate it, and embrace it. With, with, with Saturday Night Live, I'll see sketches that come in that we write on a Thursday that aren't funny, but the concept is funny. And then they've rewritten it and changed it several times by Saturday that it's hilarious and it works. So I think change is a good thing. Some people are afraid of change, but I think yeah. in business, in the TV and everything, change is inevitable. And yeah. if you embrace it, and and um and and go with it. I think it could be positive um, for everybody mm -hmm. down the line. So I, that that would be my message. Leadership. What's the best leadership advice you've been given, whether Lauren Michaels or someone else you report to, um, <laughs> or that you've given because you have a team? Either yeah, one. Yeah, I think treat everybody the way you want to be treated. 
I think mm-hmm. when I was first taking over running Saturday Night Live and I was 28 years old and I didn't know what I was doing, I took my stress out on my employees and other people on the show. And I think um, when you're in a position of, of power, maybe new, and you have a team that you maybe you haven't had before and you're going to be stressed because you're going to have more responsibilities, yes. um, you tend to maybe not be able to hide that stress and you take it out on other people. You don't mean to. Mm-hmm. Um, so I learned, and I was, you know, had a t- couple of talking tos from higher up saying, "You can't act like that. You can't talk to people like that." Mm-hmm. Um, and it was, the, and they knew it was the stress. They know the kind of show I'm working on, but the, you need people to say that sometimes. You need people to say, "Okay, you know what? You're right." And then yeah. you just have to, you have to learn, w- learn how to deal with the stress other than taking it on other people. So um, yeah. I think that's it would be a good lesson to tell people. Yes, and it also shows the power of feedback. Yeah. No. No. When you get. I think when you get feedback from higher ups that say it's not you're not treating people the right way and it's not it's not it does, it's not a good look mm-hmm. you know it, it hopefully if 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 you feel, if you have feelings that's going to hurt you you know that really hurt yeah. me you know yeah. so I was like okay I have to change I have to learn how to you know react to that stuff but and again, I think it goes back to being humble. Yeah. We're we're not perfect. We are learning yeah. and feedback is a gift. Right. Whether sure. whether it's to change our behaviors as leaders, to change yeah. the show script, to right. change a product, feedback's a gift. Yeah, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Yeah. And having having the, and not having too big of an ego to accept that and and yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and change, yeah, for sure. Last question. If you could go back to your 20-year-old self based on what you know now that you didn't know then, what would you tell younger Wally? I, I'd be afraid to tell younger Wally something. <laughs> because I, don't wanna, I wouldn't want to mess up what's become of my life. If I told him something, uh, you know, I, I'd be afraid I'd, I'd mess this up. So I, I would, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say I wouldn't tell him anything. I'm going to be like, mm. just go follow your instincts and do what you... Uh, you'll feel is right. And I think you'll find your way. Oh, that is perfect advice. Right? Follow your instincts. Our gut knows yeah. and we just shove it away sometimes. So... Yeah. No, I was... My brother was trying... Once we, once he got me the job, like three or four years in, he was trying to get me to leave and do something else because I wanted to be a writer and he knew I wanted to be a writer. Um, but my gut was telling me I was, I'm really good at this. I really enjoy doing it. You know, it's not what I wanted to do, but I think eventually it's going to lead to good things. And and it did lead to really good things. You know, I started my own company, which I never even imagined doing. And mm-hmm. now I have two companies uh, uh, with it. And I'm in my third profession now. I'm a TV personality. I'm on, I'm on TV more than I've ever been in my life. And that's a whole nother segment of it. So yeah. I think it's turned out into a pretty good thing. I follow my instincts and it's worked out pretty well. And and I get, I'm on the, I'm on the Stacey Sherman podcast. <laughs> doing CX right. I mean... What more could you ask? <laughs> does it get better than that? No, oh. it's not. <laughs> well, I just truly love you and I am so appreciative of you being here. And I'm going to put in the show notes all the places to reach you, yes. especially yes. for cue cards directly. And yes. thank you. You're welcome. Thanks Have a great me. day. Okay. You too.